Dear learners, we shall now go for the second part of the video on the unit industrial sickness. In the first part, we shall dis we discuss about the definition. We shall also discuss about some of the causes of industrial sickness, mostly the external causes. Uh, in this second part of the unit on industrial sickness, we shall take up some learning objectives. And uh, here we shall mostly discuss about the internal causes of industrial sickness. In the previous video we discussed about the external causes. Now here we shall discuss about the internal causes of industrial sickness. And then we shall take up the other learning objectives. That is to identify the factors responsible for sickness of small business. Industrial sickness is applicable to right, any kind of uh, industries in any kind of economies, be it developing economies, be it developed economies or be it emerging economies. And uh, industrial sickness can be made applicable, right, is applicable to the large industries, to the small industries, to the medium kind of industries, right, what we call say MSME sector, right, small and medium enterprises. But uh, small businesses, the industrial sickness related factors are a bit different compared to very large business. So in this video, we shall discuss these aspects as well. So what are the internal causes of industrial sickness? External causes, a frequent change in government policies, natural calamities, we discuss about the external causes, erratic supply or could be shortage of supply of raw materials, those are outside the organization. A flood happens, an earthquake happens, these are beyond the control of an organization. These are all external. But within the you know, control of that organization, there are some factors, some causes, which lead towards industrial sickness. It's a faulty location of industrial units. An industry requires supply of raw materials, supply of machineries, equipment. It has to be close to market. It has to be close to the suppliers. Suppose the location is not conducive. Many times what happens? The government tries to promote industries in the industrially backward areas. And they promote certain, they give certain schemes also. Raw material subsidy, capital subsidy, etc. And sometimes some industries also, that in case of urban area, the cost of land, procurement of land, right, the high cost, rural areas, procurement of land will not be that. So they may think about establishing their industries in rural areas, hilly areas or say, right, otherwise industrially backward areas. But what happens? Transportation of raw materials to those places right, becomes, suppose in Assam, there was an industry called industrial paper and craft industries and that was uh, proposed to be established in a place called Thing. Right? Those of you who are familiar with the geography of Assam or maybe some of the learners may be from Thing area also. But for transporting the machineries etc., the road conditions have to be good, adequate bridges have to be there, but the bridges, the carrying capacity of the bridges were not that high. Carrying capacities of bridges, suppose say 8 tons, 9 tons, the machinery itself, suppose, right, require higher amount of carriage capacity. So faulty location of industrial units ultimately will lead towards sickness. Suppose for a big refinery, right, in Assam we have the Numerigal refineries, Right. In order to transport the big refining, refining equipment, they use the in, inland water, that the water with the Brahmaputra and the Thonsiri river, that the breeze created a problem, so they have to right, make certain adjustments. So the location of the place, if the other things are not taken care of, might lead towards sickness. It may not be viable. Defective selection of plants and machineries. Suppose in a cement industry, we have purchased some machineries which are suppose say one generation back. But the market requires the cement produced to the new generation machines. Right? 
Now the market will not accept right, some products. So like it could be in the pharmaceutical companies also. The plants and machineries which are outdated right, will lead towards because the market will require state of the art things. Adoption of obsolete technology. Obsolete technology also will lead towards the failure of the industrial organizations to meet the new age requirements. The entrepreneurs, they need constant training. Many times it is there is a saying that forming an enterprise and sustaining an enterprise are two different challenges and both are equally tough. You can start an enterprise, but sustaining that enterprise, the entrepreneurs will have to be continually right, innovative in mindset. The entrepreneurs will have to be continually train themselves to meet the changing requirements of the situation. So that if the entrepreneurs are not competent, their units are likely to be right, not, not likely to be viable. That they will not be able to sustain the enterprises. That, that will right, be sick. Labor problems could be there, strike, strained industrial relations, right? There could be some strikes, thorners, lockouts. This could be problems. And moreover, the employees themselves. They may not remain competent. And in case of sickness of small business, right, some of the problems, lack of managerial skills. Suppose the market wants new and new technology, market wants that a cane and bamboo that is to be used in the say cane and bamboo craft industry right, has to be of good quality. But we have not been able to gauge the pulse of the customers and we have produced something else of say inferior quality. Lack of managerial skills, we need to be proactive in the managerial skills in terms of decision making skills, problem solving skills, right? In the principles of management paper, you have discussed about this, no? analytical skills. So the managers will have to have those kind of skills. Lack of managerial skills will lead towards the sickness. Non-observance of management principles. Management principles like say we all know right the things need to be planned, right? It needs to be organized, proper equipment, proper training. If we do not observe all this, in that case that will likely to lead towards the sickness. Under utilization of capacity. Capacity is not fully utilized. Means what? Is a problem of working capital. Government policies also. Suppose government policies, if they are incentivizing the small scale entrepreneurs, they will be able to sustain. Withdrawal of the incentives, withdrawal of say capital subsidy, withdrawal of say transport subsidy, if they are not in a position to sustain, means what? They were highly dependent on government schemes. That should be, that is not desirable. They should be able to sustain on themselves. Easy approval of small scale, right? Units by the state. Sometimes government, in order to popularize the entrepreneurship movement, sometimes they promote some, say, easy to finance, say, project proposals, say, refill making units, or say, shock making units, or say, industrial paper making units, or something like that. They will promote certain enterprises and they will give some capital subsidies also, some in the financial assistance. But while executing those projects, the entrepreneurs face a lot of problems. They face problems in terms of sourcing raw materials. They face problems in terms of recruiting trained workers. They face problems in competing with the national counterparts, the branded companies, and they fail to establish their brands. And ultimately, they have to close down their factories. So, government gives easy approval, and that will attract the entrepreneurs to start their entrepreneurs. But at the time of implementation, they face the real life challenges. So, government approval is required. So, based on the government approval, they should be able to meticulously plan all the details with their own managerial skills by observing the management principles like planning, organizing, right, demand forecasting, etc. Then they would be able to arrest the problem of industrial sickness they would be able to sustain the enterprises and that will in fact help in retaining the status of small business. So this is some of the aspects of right, the second part of the video. We shall conclude the other things in the third video. Thank you.